What up, what up, what up? Okay, the glasses is on. The glasses is on, so it looks like we officially ready. The glasses is on. The glasses is on. We officially ready. Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, large and in charge of my one and only self, looking to take myself up off the shelf so I can discover my greatest internal, eternal wealth. Hoping you do the same for yourself. Y'all know what time it is. Grunt speak, or as I should say, speak grunt. That's what we do today. We come on here, we speak to you. We hope you jump down in the chat and you speak back to us too. But it ain't no we today, it's just me. Whiskey Charlie, he had to do that thing we call work, see? And he got the clothes. But I'm pretty sure if he get an opportunity to tap in, he'll tap in. He'll come around. He'll see what's going down. But this is speak grunt. When we speak to you, you speak to us too. And what we do is we talk to that certain crew, that, that MOS crew, that 11B, that uh, Mortarman, 11 Charlie. I think the Marine Corps, it start with a 030311, them two, and all my combat arms crew, male and female, I don't want to miss you. I don't want nobody to be feeling left out. You know how we do. But it's grunt speak. This message is for you and your kids. PSA, please, please, please excuse some of the words that we might say. It might not be right for their ears, but it's going to bless them today. So it's just me and you. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to get on here and we're going to have a little bit of fun for about 45 minutes or an hour or so. And then we're going to go. And I don't know if you've seen in the chat what we're going to talk about today. Are you spreading yourself too thin? The new year has begun. I hope it's set up for you to win. We talked about last week, you setting your goals and where you looking to go. But are you spread too thin? Are you spread too thin? So if you out here and you watching, Give me a little thumbs up in the chat down below. Let me know that you're here with the Speak Grunt Flow. And make sure to do me a favor. Share this video. Go to the YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe to the Speak Grunt channel. We appreciate that. I appreciate that. And we're going to give it a few more seconds for people to jump on. I ain't going nowhere, so I ain't going to say I'll be right back. But uh. Let's get into that. Let's talk about that. Are you spreading yourself too thin? But before we go, let's talk about that win. That one-minute war, that one-minute win, 
Come on, man. Somebody be my friend. Jump down in the chat and tell me what you're struggling with. What's on your back? And it's probably going to be up to me to start this thing off. Let me get my drink right. Nope. This is not a beer. It's clear. It's water. That's all I'm doing over here. Remember I said this is a whole new year and I'm starting a whole new thing. It's called sobriety for me. Not that I ever, well, I don't think I had a problem with alcohol. It never controlled me, nor did I have a problem with my medicine, the miracle marijuana thing. But I realized for me, I wanted to be completely free of any substances or anything like that in my body. I ain't even taking Tylenol, G. What am I warring with today? What am I warring with today? You know, to be honest with you, I don't have a truly war, a true war that I'm dealing with personally. But somebody that something that's eating at me, something that's bothering me is um, I, I've lost another, a friend, a leader, a man, a, a man amongst men, you know, we know people going to leave. We just don't know when that time is going to come. But this time, that time is a little difficult. So a war for me and the same thing, uh, a war for me right now that I'm dealing with is another one of my fellow soldiers or my leader, my old company commander, shout out to Captain Smart, no disrespect. He probably was a major or a light colonel because we went our separate ways after our deployment in 2009, 2010. But What's going on, Faust? Yep, you got it. R.I.P. Captain Smart. Um, I jumped on Facebook earlier today because I've been kind of staying away as I start off the new year, even though I'm still promoting, pr pr putting out content, right? I jumped on Facebook earlier today to look at something on my page, and I was saddened to see that Captain Smart had left us, and it, it bothered me. Like, that one hit me a little different. I've lost other soldiers and um, people from Michigan people from Texas too, but I've never lost the leadership and somebody who really believed in me and, and, and gave the mantle to me for my team to make it through. So that one kind of bothered me. I, I don't know how it's going to sit with me, but the win in that was Facebook. Facebook. There was no snail mail. I was able to take a look on Facebook and find out this thing. So that part was a win in technology. It was a war to see that. Like, how do you deal with that? We just seem like we keep losing soldiers back to back. But the win is we have this thing called Facebook and this technology to get information out there quickly. Sometimes we can spread ourselves too thin and we constantly war within but we don't see the win. So I want to take a quick moment of silence for Captain Jeremy Smart, maybe Major Jeremy Smart, maybe Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy Smart. But I knew him as Captain Smart when he was my commander of Bravo Company, first of the 141 Bulldogs. You know how we got down in Iraq and all those great times that we had. So I want to just take a quick minute to show my respect to Captain Smart and uh, pause the music and go. All right. All right. Thank you for that. We are right back. If by chance you knew Captain Smart, you were part of the 141 Battalion, and you just happen to be on here, drop your comments down in the thought of what he may have meant to you, something that he may have helped you through. Uh some funny stories you might remember too. 
I got to a moment earlier today where I was about to get a little teary eyed, but it turned into a little bit of laughter too. Cause it reminded me of some things that my buddies used to do before I was real cool with Captain Smart, but <laughs> we took our old Lieutenant and we kidnapped him. And uh, we took him over to Captain Smart's room and we decided to zip cuff him to the door. We used to do all little crazy stuff. Like we would take deer man and we would knock on his door and we would sit a deer head outside his door. It was a deer that he had that he would practice his bow hunting with when we were in Iraq. And we would take it and we turn it in. Well, my guys turned it into a uh, whole little skit. But this day we took our lieutenant and we knocked on his door. And no, I'm sorry. Let me go back. Let me slow down. This particular time, a couple of guys went and knocked on his door that we would like to do, and we would wait for him to come out his door, and we would run around and laugh. And uh, my other buddy, Z, could tell his story better than I could, but this one particular time, we went and banged on his door, and he came out, and he didn't see anybody. And so we waited a few minutes, went and banged on his door, did it again, and he came out, and I think he had his taser in his hand, and he started screaming, Paige, Z, Torres! That kid with the glasses, which was AKA Cavazos, <laughs> like, uh, I'm going to get you guys. I'm looking for you. Next time we came back and he opened the door, he was surprised to see his lieutenant zip cuff to his door. Thought that was pretty fun, but he took it with grace. Nobody got in trouble. No, no, nobody got reprimanded or anything like that. And he was just one of those cool commanders that anybody would love to serve with. He never really spread himself too thin now he was spread thin but not too thin to where he couldn't give us the battle plan and the mission for us to win so man i look forward to seeing some of you guys whenever we get the details for uh the arrangements i know it'll be well done um it'll be a sad time but it'll also be fun so again i want to say rest in paradise to captain smart gone but never forgotten a true man a true leader a true commander true friend the most probably from what i could tell when i met his wife you know great husband you can see it by the look on the man's wife face probably a great father so man rest in peace to captain smart but getting into this thing today are you spreading yourself too thin ah before i forget something else that was bothering me I know a friend of mine who's spreading himself, what most would think is pretty thin, but what he's doing is definitely a win. There is no wrong time to celebrate a soldier that's been lost. And I won't go into any detail, or I won't really go into any names, but people and individuals know who there are. We have to stop the fratricide. We have to stop the blue on blue. That's not what we do. That's not what we do. And, and, and I'll be brief with this because uh, an individual has been making it his business in my old unit, first of the 125, to present plaques to the families of soldiers that was lost, not just from the company that he deployed with, but from other companies as well. And there's another individual who, didn't, who that didn't go over so well with. And there was some choice words said on Facebook that went back and forth. And there was other people that got involved. Of course, other people chimed in and gave their comments. Man, this is it. We got to stop it. We got to stop it. There's 22 soldiers a day committing suicide. This is definitely not a ride that we want to take where we're committing fratricide on one another, whether it be truly physically or whether it be verbally. We're all in this fight together. We're all in this fight together. And anytime an individual wants to celebrate a fallen comrade that was part of their battalion, then we should be allowed to do that. They, they are allowed to do that. Who are we to say or who are we to be able to take that away? We have no idea why individuals do what they do. But if they're doing it for all the wrong reasons, they'll have to answer for that too. But knowing that individual, I know that part ain't true. I know they're doing it just to honor the individuals that was lost. So I think it's time that we kind of let bygones be bygones and we figure out a way to make it to, we figure out a way to make it through together every day, just like we did in Iraq, just like we did in Afghanistan, just like we did in all foreign lands. We don't come back to this land 
that we decided to defend and then start taking shots at one another because somebody could lose their life in the end. And that's just the honest to God truth. That's not what we want to do. So I'm going to leave it right there and I'm going to stop at that. Please, let's, let's get back to supporting one another and being strong and being brothers. So are you spreading yourself too thin? Are you spreading yourself too thin? In the army, when we were going to battle or when we were trained, we would do it with three to one odds. Meaning our three today won. Fight was usually pretty fun for us. Wasn't so fun for them. But when you go on a three to one odds, it gives you an opportunity, a better opportunity to win. But a lot of times when we're dealing with things as individuals on our own, we don't use those same tactics. When I mean by three to one, you may have you, you may have your wife, you may have friends, you may have family, you may have work, you may have social media, you may have hobbies, your telephone, all those things are stacked up against you. So you're on the opposite side of the three to one event, right? You have multiple things attacking you and you feel like you're spread so thin you don't know what to do. You have multiple things attacking you and you feel like you spread so thin you don't know what to do. Here's what I implore you to do. Begin to build a crew of individuals who helps you, who believes in you, who want to see you win. Again, in the Army, it was three to one odds. My two guys against your one guy. In life, it don't always work out that way. You go to work. Your boss got something to say. You feel like he's just talking to you. He's just attacking you. You and your wife have an altercation. You feel like she's just attacking you. You don't know what to do. And that's like your right hand. Man, that's your best friend. Hopefully. Should be. You have a family. They may not feel like you're doing everything that they need. And you're like, man, I just can't, I can't seem to win. I cannot seem to win. But then again, Maybe you are. Maybe you are. Maybe you are winning. Maybe you are winning, but it's those things that attack that stacked up against you that make you feel like you're losing and you don't have the right crew. In those three to one odds where I talked about the people that you feel like may be attacking you or may be causing you to lose the fight, some of those people actually help you get it right. Some of those people actually help you get it right. It's some of these things that we could do without. It's some of these things that we could do without. So when I was um when I was in Iraq in 2006, my company commander, he had a a battle plan that we would follow at any given time that we were out in sector it would at a minimum be two squads maybe three each from a different platoon right so we may have been working in say northern baghdad of our sector right Another squad from 1st Platoon may have been working in northeastern Baghdad of our sector. Another squad may have been working just south, right? Those three to one odds. So at any given time that something went wrong, you had instant support. You ain't pick up the phone to call them. Nope, I wasn't finna say that. All you had to do is look on the Blue Force tracker and send a message. All you had to do is get on the radio and send a message. 
you didn't have to wait for reinforcements to come your way because the battle plan was set in the way that you already had reinforcements right there with you to help you win. But see, nowadays in this day and age in this stage of life, we don't have individuals around to help us get it right, to help us win because we're spread it too thin. You're looking to be the perfect husband for your wife. You're looking to be the provider for your family. You're looking to work so many hours so you can provide for your family and your wife. You want to be there for your friends, to go to the events, the parties, play all the little games. You on social media, which was a good thing for me today. Help me learn us some information. You on social media, scrolling and comparison yourself to other things. Telephone ringing. Hobbies that you want to do, you spread so thin, you don't know what you're going to do. You spread so thin, you don't know what you're going to do. These things are probably killing you, and it doesn't allow you to help you focus on where you want to be or what you want to do. See, you in the Army, and we had those three-to-one odds, and you was a four-man team. Each individual had their assigned mission that they needed to do. Now, the mission collectively we had to do as a whole. But the saw gunner had a specific mission. The rifleman had a specific mission. The grenadier had a specific mission. The team leader had a specific mission. And each individual mission covered down on the entire mission. You married. You know what your mission is, maybe, to provide for your wife and family. Does your wife have a mission? Y'all know Whiskey Charlie talks about often his wife holds down the whole front. So his wife is part of his three to one odds against the one mortgage. Maybe you got two against the one job because she can support you building with the family. But then he also has his family, his daughters, his brothers, his mother, his father, who support him too. Three-man crew, more than three, three individuals, but three-man crew to attack that one thing that's bothering you. Now, they're not all paying the mortgage, but they can tell you how to get through paying the mortgage. They're not all going to work with you, but they can tell you how to get through those tough times at work too. But if you spread yourself so thin where you feel like you have to do this all on your own, guess what? We'll never win. Tell me if I'm wrong, please drop it down in the chat. Tell me, man, you sound whack. I don't even know what you're talking about today. Tell me, please do, if you don't follow me. Are the numbers stacked against you? Do you feel like you a one man crew? Do you feel like you don't know how to empower the individuals that's around you to help you get through? Even when it comes to work too, your work should be part of your team that's supporting you. Your work should be building you to be a better version of you. Even if it's just work to pay for the place that you live. No, you missed that. Your work should be part of your crew. Your work should be part of your team too. That should be something that's on your team that helps you obtain, get, maintain everything that you see in front of you. Because if you're not working or if you're not doing and work is just doing you, then that's a part of the enemy's crew. Case in point, my work, T-Work, shout out to T-Works, co-working. My work helps me to become a better speaker. My work helps me to become a better businessman. My work helps me to build new solid relationships with a different set of friends. And my work supports me in what I do. My work is part of my team to help me accomplish the mission and the things that I go through. My wife, my right hand, my right hand, my probably my first in command, not my second in command, but my right hand, 
she helps me get through too. She's part of my three to one crew. But when I look at things like my hobbies and my social media, although I love speaking to you and giving to you, I can sometimes get on social media and feel like the enemy is winning and beating me down too. Because I just find myself scrolling and comparing and then you find yourself complaining and worrying about what everybody else do. Sometimes you have to remove certain things away from you. I'm learning how to take pauses when I speak today. I don't want to be in no hurry. I don't want to be in no rush. Because I want you to understand the importance of not spreading yourself so thin and not having the right odds around you so that you can win. Everything in life won't be set up easy for you. Hell, most things in life won't be easy for you. But if you have the right crew, if you have the right crew, then there's nothing you cannot do. Even a sniper comes in a two-man team, a sniper team. And you might be thinking, yo, I thought you said three to one. Yes, their third man you just don't see. It's the Overwatch team or the team that goes in early. You cannot go into this world walking on your own. You come in this world on your own. But if you know, like I know, you do so much more when you're not working alone. You can accomplish a lot by yourself. But imagine if you took those other parts of the puzzle off the shelf. How much easier, how much sooner, how much, how... And I just leave it at that. How much easier or how sooner could you discover yourself? How easier or how sooner could you overcome the battle within sometimes just as well as outside? Some of us take these people on this list, our friends, and they become the enemy too because they want to pull you back into those things and have you doing what you don't want to do. They want you to just come to the parties and talk about the sports and the games, but they don't want to do anything to help you build nor maintain. I just talked about friends at work. They support me in what I go through. They're part of my three to one crew. They're part of reassuring me of what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to do. Who's on this list that's reassuring you? Is it your wife? Is it your family? Is your work supporting what you do? Whiskey Charlie talked about that too. Is your hobbies supporting what you do? Or is that just a break from you because you feel like you're being beat down and you don't know what else to do? So your hobbies become freedom for you. Your hobbies become relaxation for you. But guess what else your hobbies can come? Time consuming too time consuming too. So the question is, are those hobbies building you or are those hobbies breaking you? Is that telephone building you or is that telephone breaking you? Is that social media building you or is that social media breaking you? How are you using the things and the individuals that's a part of your crew? Are they part of the three to one odds or are they part of the one that's destroying you? Let that marinate. I'm going to let that marinate. How do we get the pendulum to swing back in a positive direction? How do we get the pendulum to swing back in a positive direction? How do we get the odds back on our side? Well, you have to take a look. You have to take a look at those things that most people are willing to hide. You have to take a look at those things that most people are willing to have to, to hide. You have to be honest with yourself when you feel like you're losing. You feel like you're stretched thin and you don't know what to do. You feel like you don't have anybody to talk to. I want to tell you that's a lie that the devil's feeding you. You always got the victory if you down with the spiritual crew, if you down with God's crew. Maybe that ain't it for you. Maybe you, I, I believe in the earth and the universe too. That's cool. That's what you do. But is the earth and the universe working with you or against you? 
Because if you feel like it's working against you, then that's not part of your three-man crew. That's not part of your three-man crew. If you're treating your wife like she's the enemy, that's not part of your three-man crew. If you're treating your family like they're the enemy, that's not part of your three-man crew. Now, maybe the family you were born into, maybe the family that you were born into could be the enemy for you. I've been through some of that too. At least that's what it feels like. But the family that you may have created, if you created a family, they are an example or a representation of what they see. And this is specifically for the men today, but not the whole message, but this part. Your family are an example or a representation of what they see. So your family that you created should never be your enemy. Uh, no, I am not getting your comments. They are not showing up on my feed. Hold on, sir. No, I am not getting your comments. I only had one comment, and that was from Faust um, saying, R.I.P. Captain Smart. Let's see if you get my comments. Oh, I did not. Oh, are you getting my comments? They aren't showing up on my feed. No, they are not showing up on my feed either. Excuse me, man. Somebody is messaging me. A buddy of mine, Chris, is messaging me, and he wanted to make sure I was getting his comments. No, I am not seeing your comments. If... You are out there. Okay. I'm not seeing any other comments either. I see your comments now, Miss Charlene. I see that. And I seen one from earlier from my buddy Faust. And I seen my own comment. But I do see your comments, Miss Charlene. So if Chris and you want to send comments that way, that works for me today. If it's anyone else out there having a problem with me seeing their comments, please message me directly on Facebook. You can either message me at Speak Grunt or you can message me at Ethan J. Smith. One way or the other is going to come through to me. One way or the other is going to come through to me. As I wait and see. But back where I was at. Who's a part of your three-man team? Who's a part of your three-man team to help you take the odds against life to, to win today? Who's a part? Hell yeah. That would be a that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Um, hell yeah, you can make a monument for Captain Smart. And I will check, sir, to make sure he was still Captain Smart, not Major Smart or Lieutenant Colonel Smart. So I'm not being disrespectful. I'll send that message out tonight, but that would be great. He was the commander for Bravo Company, 1st of the 141 Infantry. When we serve together, so that would be freaking amazing. And I would love to present it to the unit so they can in turn get it to his wife. Yes, that would be fucking amazing. I'm sure the individuals that I know would love, respect, and appreciate that. Again, I'm talking three to one. I'm talking three to one, and I just talked about earlier Soldiers supporting soldiers. Indeed, I will. Y'all have to excuse me because it's not coming through the chat. So I got to go back and forth on messengers. How about that? Indeed, I will definitely get that information to you. I have to be get the correction um, on his rank. And as a matter of fact, I am going to send out a message right now to make sure I don't forget that. So y'all just take a tactical pause with me. And while you thinking, while you on that tactical pause, think about 
Who's on your three-man crew to help you get through? Maybe you got a four-man crew too, but you got to have somebody other than just you. Because one-on-one -on -one don't happen always. The enemy, the devil, our mind, our past thoughts, they come in so many multitude of ways. And then you cannot focus on who you are today. You need them three to one odds so you can make it through. Come on, man. I'm, I'm talking to you. I, I'm, I, I'm speaking to you. I know you hear me. I know you hear me. Let me look for this information real quick. Uh, ow. There we go. And boom. Okay. I have to send out a message to make sure I get the right rank before I give the information to Dykes. And um, yes. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. As a matter of fact, I might just make a phone call and find out. All right, cool. I've sent that message out and I'm also going to send it in the text message to make sure I cover <clears throat> cover it two ways, Chris. I definitely appreciate this and I know my guys from the Bulldogs will love it. Messenger came right back to me. Cool. Appreciate it. So, Excuse me, I'm, I'm messaging with uh, Major Adams, who was my old XO up under Captain Smart to get the right information for his rank and make sure it's okay that I continue to use Bravo first to the 141 because that's where I knew him from and I don't want to be disrespectful to any other units. So that's what I'm doing. Again, three to one odds. I cannot do this all by myself. I know Whiskey Charlie ain't here. He working. You may not see the people that's watching or who's messaging me, but that's okay. The enemy don't always see who I have of me either. Remember, I said it, sniper teams, two-man team, you just don't see the Overwatch team. On the assault team, you just don't see the Overwatch crew. The enemy don't need to always see who you have with you, but you need to know you got somebody with you who's rocking with you who's going to help you. This how we get through. All this back and forth bickering, and bullshit that we can sometimes do, that's not how you build the crew. It's not how you build the crew. Um, Cool. All right. I'm back. I do believe I'm back. 
Uh, I do see Chris Faust and Speak Grunt, just not Christian's comments. Hey, I'm back. What is the unit? Hey, I got you on here now, Chris. Appreciate you. So we're going to go. Boom. I'm typing the information into you now. 1 141 infantry. And I am confirming with my old XO right now to make sure everything is correct. And he's typing back to me right now. And once I see that, I will confirm that that is all correct. And then you can execute and do everything that you need to do. Cool. I appreciate it. I'm going to have him put it. Do, 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 do. Um, no. No F on the end of infantry. Yeah, that's old school me. Y'all have to excuse me. I'm multitasking. I can use three people right now to be typing for me. You know what, Sarge never liked doing paperwork. If you know anything about me, I was not a paperwork sergeant. <clears throat> I can close that. I can go back here. Boom. All right. So it is just drop the F on infantry. I in. Captain Jeremy Smart, first at a 141 Bravo Company. For the last time, I'm going to type this, I think, Chris. Ah, no, people just, no, people, just a lot of people write it that way. Branch abbreviators are always two later. Okay, cool. Okay, um, I'm multitasking right now. Y'all have to forgive me. I'm actually messaging right now with my former XO and I'm also messaging right now with my former lieutenant and I am connecting look at that three people three different areas working on one thing to honor one individual I appreciate that and I appreciate y'all waiting patiently with me um okay thank you um doo -doo 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 -doo. I cannot take credit for this one they asked me if they could create it and i said yes all right there we go let me see okay there we go um, I still have to do Mejia Ogham first, then I will take care of Smart. Hey, not a problem. When you get it done, I will be grateful for it. You let me know if there's anything that I need to do where I can help uh, help you out. And I will make sure to get it to the right individuals to make sure it get presented to his wife. And if I can get a picture once it get presented, then I will get a picture, present it, and definitely uh, I appreciate that. And I know everybody from my old unit will appreciate that, too. Boom. All right. 
uh, Chris, again, thank you very much. My former XO says, thank you very much. Definitely appreciate everything that you are getting ready to do. We appreciate that, brother. And I told him, give me a little time and I'll get it. And once I get it, I'll get it to him. And then he will get it presented to his wife. And he said, I'm sure she'll appreciate that. So, man, who's your friends? Huh. Who's your family? Who support what you do? Are you going into the fight all alone or is somebody helping you? Are you spreading yourself too thin, attempting to win the battles within, internally, and externally? I know earlier today I posted a video said you got to run your race at your own pace. Because when you run your race at your own pace, you always come in first place. But even in running a race, there are pace setters. And guess what? When there's a pace setter, you're not alone. There's someone keeping you on track. So I'm glad that I have pace setters with me when I decide to run my race. Man, you wouldn't even believe me if I told you I started not to do the show today. Because Whiskey Charlie wasn't going to be here. And I said, no. Nah. I'm going to be okay. I started out doing this alone. And how dare I not come on here and give this information to somebody that may need it? I don't know who's always watching. I don't know when they'll see it. But that's not up to me to figure out. I'm here to do the work that God has called me to do to hopefully say some words that's going to bless you. And the fact that I got on here and I honored and I, re and I, and I showed respect to a man who blessed me as a leader a friend, a mentor, and Chris Dykes asked, could he do a simple task and, not simple, but a task and create a plaque for someone he didn't even know? Did you see the first part of the show where I talked about soldiers celebrating other soldiers and still being there for their families? How dare we have the audacity to come at one each other with fratricide, G? That's not what we represent. When you got the right people on your team, you can accomplish anything when you got the right people on your team. Who's your friends? What, what do the odds look like for you? What is it that you feel like you're going through that you can't get through? I guarantee you, if you look around you, it's someone there who can help you. Whether it be your wife, whether it be your own leadership, who helped you get your life right? I got to close a couple pages. I got I to gotta close a couple pages. Whether it's your family, maybe it's some people that you work with too who believe in you and what you do. Who's supporting you? Who's on your team when you go into the fight? Who's on your team when you in the fight at night? I can remember times when I punched my wife in my sleep at night because I was battling the demons and the things that I was going through from the things that I had seen in Iraq. She still rock with me when I woke up in the middle of the night screaming crazily. She still rock with me. She went to the VA therapy meetings with me too. That's my husband. I'm going to stick beside him. Who's sticking beside you? And who are you sticking beside to? Who are you sticking beside to? You part of a three-man crew. Or are you that one individual who don't know what to do, so you're attempting to attack the three-man crew who you know going to destroy you? Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> It's January, January the 6th, 2022. My question is, what you going to do? How will you build your crew? How will you build the individuals around you? How will you uplift the individuals around you? What is the enemy going to do when he see you come through? The enemy in your mind who's attacking you, telling you what you cannot be, who you will not be, what you should not be. Who's talking to you about what you are? what you can become, what you're becoming. Come on, please. You got to know that you are worth more than what you feel like you going through. Life ain't easy for me. I go through shit too. 
I got a father who I'm dealing with that's in and out of nursing homes and care facilities. You don't think that bothers me? I've talked about it a time and time, but who am I to share negativity with you or something that's beating me down? Oh, trust me, I got a crew. I got a crew of people. My wife is a part of that crew. I got army buddies a part of that crew. I got work friends a part of that crew. I get to share those things with them too. And then I can come on here and I can support you. But if I didn't have that to do, I wouldn't be on here to be able to support you. I would probably be an enemy to you talking about negative things too, or talking about things that you probably shouldn't do. No, I'm not here for that. I'm here to uplift you. I'm here to inspire you. I'm here to remind you. There's something that you've already been through that you thought could break you, but it did not break you. You was able to break through. Whew. Hey, man, I don't know if I'm talking as good to you as I'm talking to me, but I guarantee this is going to set somebody free. This is going to set somebody free. Listen to me. You cannot spread yourself so thin to where you don't have the ability to win. Don't allow the enemy of our mind, of our past, of the devil, if you're a spiritual man or woman, the, the, the things, the coronavirus, the things that's going on in the universe, don't allow the negativity of our minds to win. Don't allow it to take up too much of your time. We have to find a way to celebrate our wife. We have to find a way to celebrate our life. We have to find a way to celebrate our family. We have to find a way to celebrate the work that we do, even if you feel like it's not benefiting you. Because if it's paying your bills, it's benefiting you too. So make the work a part of your crew. You get to decide what you do. You get to decide how you feel. You get to decide what's real. You get to decide whether you're going to be real to heal or you're going to fake it until you attempt to make it. Mm, mm, mm. You get to decide whether you're going to be real in order to heal or you're going to fake it until you make it. I told you. And I seen that Captain Smart died. That kind of fucked me up. It, it bothered me. Like, what? That's just unbelievable to me. Because when I seen him, he was always somebody that was on top of his game to me. I just, I just never fathomed that that would be something that I would see. But why would I get on here and lie to you and say that didn't bother me? We all go through something, too. But I was able to see the positive things and the joy that that bring. And again, somebody, Chris, wants to make a plaque to represent that. What they going to say about you when you through? Who going to be there to speak on your behalf when you through? Who going to talk about all the wonderful things you are able to do? Or will the enemy beat you? Will the enemy destroy you? Or will you destroy you? But not in allow by not allowing your light, your true light to come through. You know, if you hear, there's something you're supposed to do. You may not be doing it the best, so you think. I think you should keep doing it until you do it better. Chris, I love you too, bro. I love you too. Man, I'm man enough to tell a man I love him because we don't say it enough, and I really mean it. Some people don't love themselves, so they can't tell no one else. We don't win this thing in life on our own. We don't win this thing in life on our own. I don't care how great Michael Jordan was. He still needed Scottie Pippen. He still needed Steve Kerr, John Paxson, Luke Longley, Tony Kukoc, Dennis Rodman. Tom Brady still needed Bill Belichick. Gronk. When you think about the old school Dallas Cowboys, America's team, I'm going to say that because this is some of my Texas people on here too. But you think about the big three, Troy, Michael, and Emmett. Three to one odds. Three to one odds. Mind, body, spirit. The Holy Trinity. Who's rocking with you? Who's a part of your crew? 
Have you flipped your enemies to your friends and your supporters? Because you could do that too. <laughs> Have you flipped your enemies to your friends and your supporters? Because you know you could do that too. But you got to be willing to set the pace for your life in order for you to make it through. This ain't no fake it till you make it. Be real in order to truly heal. Be real in order to truly heal. You ain't got to put on for nobody. You don't got to be something that you not. You just got to be you. No matter what others may think of you. You got to know that it's okay for you to just be you. And in order to truly heal, you got to be real, man. I ain't perfect. I got flaws, I got shortcomings, I got shit that I deal with too. But here's one thing that I'm gonna say to you. I know I got a crew. I know I got a crew who sees me better sometimes than I see myself too. And that crew, they help me get through. From my wife, my family, the one I created, the one I was born to and the brotherhood that I became a part of in the army, in the infantry. Speak, grunt. Grunts speak. We get loud when we in combat. Shift fire, lift fire. As my buddy Z would say, hotel, that means execute, assault. We get loud. So don't get quiet when the enemy is beating you down when you feel like you all alone by yourself. No, you in the fight now. Nah. Make noise. Let them know you here. You got this little telephone, it's like the enemy for you. You on the social media, you seeing what everybody else is up to, what they about to do. And then you start comparing you. Turn this little enemy sometimes into a friend and free and relax your mind. That's what I did. I started getting on this thing and I started doing inspirational videos. And look, now I'm doing a couple different shows. What you gonna do? What are you going to do so you won't be spirit so thin? Start to swing, start to shift the swing in the pendulum to a positive direction till you feel like you always win. You know, I called a buddy of mine, one of my coaching partners earlier today, right? And I talked about is the phone the enemy in your way? Yeah, this thing. I called my buddy, right? And it went to voicemail. And I'm a notorious non-voicemail lever. Don't leave voicemails. Just don't do it. For some strange reason, I don't do it. That's very important. But when I called his phone, I thought he answered. But it wasn't him. It was call screening. And it said, hello, this is Robo Killer. <laughs> I say, Robo Killer, what? Who might be calling? And what is your reason for calling? Did, did you hear me? When I called his phone, I thought he answered, but it was Robo Killer. And it wanted to know who I was and why I was calling. He had screened his call before the enemy could ever even get through. Do you know who coming for you? So I had to politely say, this is Ethan, and I'm calling, I'm returning the call about the conversation that we had the other day so we can have about the conversation about the things that happened in your car so you can explain them to me and I can share some things with you in that way. But he had to scream before I could get directly to him. Are you screening the people that's coming around you? Are you screening a job before you go to? Are you screening the social media? Come on, man. What, what is protecting you from you overstretching you? Don't be stretched so thin to where you feel like you don't have the energy to win the fight that you win. Don't be stretched so thin to where you don't have the energy to win the fight that you win. If you listening to my voice today, if you watch this video later in some way, there is some type of battle that happens in your life. You heard me say it at the beginning of the show, one minute win, one minute war. It's all right. Talk about those things that help you get through. And sometimes when you feel all alone, that's exactly what you need to do. I told you, Whiskey Charlie said, I ain't gonna be there today. I gotta work. 
So what was I going to do? Was I not going to bring this message to you? And then guess what that would have done to me? I might have missed the opportunity for Chris to use his gift and create another plaque to bless another family to show them that soldiers, even though their loved ones are gone, still have their back. The only way we change that motherfucking 22 is by doing what we do. I'm attempting not to cuss so much. Jesus might not like it, or maybe that's just me saying it to myself. All right, y'all got to hold the line because I think this is a call from a nursing home for me. Hello? Make the dream work. I'm normally not answering numbers that I don't know unless it comes from a certain area code. And I'm glad that I answered that. Like I said, nurse from my father's skilled nursing facility had my back, had to call me and let me know about some things that they needed to do to make sure he would be okay. Make them a part of my crew. How do I do that? I don't go up there with negative energy. I don't go up there feeling like they owe something to me. Now, I expect them to explain things to me, but I don't go up there disrespectfully. You get a lot more done with honey than you do shit. You get a lot more done with honey than you do shit. Nobody wants to step in it. Take the time to build the individuals around you. Take the time to build the things around you that's going to make you a better version of you. Take the time to know that it's okay to share parts of you, the things that you've overcome, because those things are not meant to break you. They are meant to build you. I, I'm a believer, man. I believe in God. God is the name I use because that's the name I was taught. Some people call him Yahweh. Some people call him Yeshua. Some people call it the universe. I believe that everything that I've been through, God used that so I could be able to share these messages with you. Don't let the negative things that happened in your past last for too long. We learn from our past, hopefully. We move on in our present to make a better future for you and me and the people and the generations that's coming after us. But if you never build a team of individuals, if you never build a relationship with individuals who want to support you, to want to help you make it through, and how do you expect to get to the best version of you? No one man's an island. No one man's an island. One man might be on the island if you watch Castaway with Tom Cruise. Not Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks. That's a whole nother story. And that's my silly side. Don't worry about that. There's plenty of people out there that got your back. There's plenty of people out there that want to help you get back on track. To live the life that you deserve to live. To live the life that you want 
to live. But you have to give. You have to be willing to give a part of you in order for you to truly make it through. I became a better leader when I was able to give a piece of me emotionally and physically and spiritually to the God in me. Who are you giving to? Or are you giving in to the negative things that surround you? Remember, in the army, in order for us to see success, it's a three to one fight ratio. And I know ratio is not a word. I just wanted it to rhyme. It's ratio. Maybe. Just maybe. You don't know what to do. Reach out to somebody who you know believe in you. Reach out to somebody who you know supports you. Tell yourself that it's okay to grow through the adversity that's bothering you, whether it be spiritually, emotionally, or physically too. Because if you hear, God has got something for you to do. Every lesson that you've been through is a blessing for somebody else's life. This gift that I have to speak is not for me. It's for me to give God the glory. He just uses me to speak to you, to show you that you can make it through. It ain't about what you used to do. As Les Brown would say, used to bees don't make no honey. It's about what are you going to do and what are you doing right now? How are you executing right now? Always be willing to give, but don't, will, don't be willing to give so much of yourself to where you feel like you have to give in to the pressures of life. Thanks, Chris. I attempt to do three things. It's part of the MIT team. You know the MIT team in the Army. But three things. Part of the MIT team. Motivate. Inspire. Transform. Motivate you by giving you information through stories that's inspiring to you. Maybe my own stories too, or something that I read or I researched too. And hopefully through those two things, motivating you, pumping you up, getting you riled up, that inspires you, that helps you to begin to transform you. You like, I know if he was able to, I'm able to. Because listen to me. I used to just think I was a dude that was a high school dropout from Detroit Public Schools. But half of the people know me that don't even know that about me, too, because they don't see that version of me. They just see the positive E. And if I allow the enemy take me back to where I used to be, then this version of me you wouldn't see. But guess what? I had a crew who believed in what I wanted to do, who believed in me when I didn't believe in myself, too. And when somebody else begins to believe in you, it is your duty and your obligation for you to believe in you too. There's nothing that you can't make it through if you're willing to work your way through. As I like to say, show up to blow up. Show up in life by giving your best and all you do. And what feels like no time at all You'll blow up to the best version of you. But you got to show up in order to blow up. So no more of that fucking fake it till you make it. Please, be real to heal. Be real with the people around you. Be real with the people that love you. 
and be real with the people that don't like you because you could flip your enemies too. That's when you know you really found the best version of you because no matter what others may think of you, you got to know that it's okay to just be you because you are something special. You are amazing. Oh, Scott, you all right, man. You ain't miss it. It's, I'm, I'm still going a little bit. Well, I'll be getting ready to end soon so I can go talk to my wife and I can do some paperwork before I go to bed tonight. But you can always tune in and watch it again. Hey, nah, that's what's up. I did not know that. You grew up in the Southwest, Chris? Oh, yeah, I got some buddies from the Southwest. Yes, indeed, an inkster ain't no joke. Never have been, never will be. Trust me. <laughs> inkster ain't no joke. <clears throat> yes, indeed, inkster ain't. Yes, indeed. Uh, Scott, when I end this broadcast, it'll definitely be on a Speak Grunt Facebook page, and it's also shared to my Ethan J. Smith page. And on Sunday, it will be live on the YouTube channel. So I appreciate you tuning in whenever you do. And uh, thank you for coming through. I'm getting ready to go to bed too, Chris. That's, that's what I'm about to do. So I'm pretty sure I'll be talking to you again. I thank you on behalf of Bravo Company, first of the 141. We thank you. On behalf of Captain Jeremy Smart and his family, we thank you for what you're getting ready to do or what you're going to do by creating that plaque for his mem for his memories too. I want to say thank you again. I love you, brother. It's like the Toy Story say, you got a friend in me. Trust and believe. I got you six. Hey, man. This has been Speak Grunt, or as I like to still call it, Grunt Speak, where we come through and we speak to you, and I hope you do the same too. And as I can clearly see in the chat, you did that with me. On behalf of Whiskey Charlie, he want to say thank y'all too, but he had to do a work do. So y'all have a blessed and wonderful night. Go home, love on your family, get your mind right. And no, if God keep waking you up, you already won the fight. Peace. I'm out.